Welcome to Revealing Jesus. Are you hungry to learn more about our beautiful Savior Jesus? I am your host, Christina Pereira, lover of Jesus, apostolic leader, licensed and ordained minister, author, podcaster, and kingdom party planner. Did you know that the Bible declares that grace and peace are multiplied to us in the knowledge of Jesus? And that simply means the more we learn about our beautiful Savior, the more we will experience all He died to give us. Join me for all things the King and His Kingdom, including revelatory teaching, interviews with Bible ministers, media leaders, authors, and more. Come discover the beauty of God displayed all across the body of Christ. Together, we are revealing more of Jesus to a hurting world today. right now in the body of Christ, that there are a lot of women specifically that have been in seasons of hiddenness. Yeah. And yet it's in those seasons of hiddenness that I just think, man, he is developing character, but he's also whispering the hidden things of heaven and, you know, in moments of prayer and walking through hard things that no one knows about, but in that hard walk, discovering new facets of God's character and his faithfulness. But before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to our Christina Prayer Ministry sponsors who help support the mission to unite the body of Christ and fulfill the Great Commission with love. A big shout out to Gopher Ministries who provides all of our equipment for our gospel events. Davis Financial Services who does all of our financial accounting. Harvest Family Network through which I am licensed and ordained and life-changing productions who helps put together evangelistic events to reach our city for Jesus. If you or your organization are interested in becoming a CPM sponsor, you can find out more information on our website at christinaperera.org. Do you have a loved one special occasion coming up and don't know what to get them? Well, now you can sponsor an episode of Revealing Jesus in their name. And you can give them a special dedication message read on air. It makes a great gift. To find out more information, just go to christinaperera.org slash podcast. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode of Revealing Jesus with Christina Pereira. I am your host, Christina, and I'm so excited to have you with me here today. I hope and I pray that you are doing well right where you are and enjoying the continuously flowing favor of grace pouring from our beautiful Savior and Father in heaven. I've got a great show for you today. I have an amazing leader in the body of Christ with me today. She is an executive pastor at Church on the Rock in Lubbock, Texas, a vibrant and diverse multi-site congregation, and she is the author of the new book, He Knows Your Name, How Seven Nameless Women of the Bible reveal Christ's love for you. I have with me here today, Paige Allen. Paige, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Christina. It's so good to be here. Oh, it's so good to be with you. I absolutely loved reading through your book. You are a fantastic storyteller. I was like, Lord Jesus, help me tell stories like she does it because, wow. So well, thank you. thank you. Yeah, I do like to tell a good story, you know, and I think I'm in good company. Jesus told a lot of stories, right? When he taught, so. And I love that because people can relate to that. You yeah. Know, I feel like sometimes in our Western Christianity, we can get very cerebral, mm-hmm. which is fine. There's places for that. Some people are very cerebral. I'm not a cerebral person. I'm not either, really. <laughs> so I think that's why I'm drawn to stories, you know? I, I also think yeah. God gave us our imagination for a reason. And so when I'm listening to a story, I don't know if you're like this, but I'm like imagining it mm-hmm. as I read it or as I hear it. And so it makes truth come alive. And I love that. Mm, I love that too. Thank you so much. Well, since this is revealing Jesus, I have to ask you how you met our beautiful Savior Jesus. Well, I love that question. So I... I'm a preacher's kid, pastor's kid. And so I have been in the church since I was a newborn. And yet I have a very vivid memory of when I was as young as literally like about three or four, 
I was in a classroom, a church Sunday school classroom, and I asked Jesus into my heart there. Oh, and I got baptized at the age of five. I mean, just really a young love for Jesus. I always really loved him. I would say to you, when I was around 15, I really entered a new level of relationship with Jesus where it grew up, I would say. And Mm -hmm. Jesus really became my friend and really became my Lord. Mm, I love that so much. And it's always a journey. Mm -hmm. Always a journey. My daughter, she comes with me to revival events and all of these fun ministry things. And I pray, Lord Jesus, please, God, mm-hmm. please, God, get a hold of my daughter. Because yeah. Sometimes as the preacher, we have like a level of influence as their parents. But sometimes mm-hmm. it's so nice when it comes from other people. Yeah. And it's like, OK, Mama, Mama really does know what she's talking about. Yes, it's so true. It's so true. Yeah. So good. Well, I have absolutely loved reading through your book. He knows your name. And, you know, the Lord was so kind as I was reading through this. And he was bringing me to places, even for me. And I'm so thankful because I benefit from all of these conversations and all these books I read and all these people that I get to talk to. I feel like I am so blessed because I get to eat constantly. It's Mm -hmm. fantastic. And so thank you for that. How did the Lord put this on your heart to write? What do you hope people see yeah. nameless women? You know, honestly, it was about eight years ago. And I was just reading the word and was talking to a friend simultaneously. And she mentioned to me, she said, you know, I just cannot move away from this story of, I think it was the Shunammite woman mm-hmm. in the Old Testament. And she just was kind of just in that place, just really wrestling with that story. And she said, there's something about nameless women. And when she said that phrase, something inside of my spirit just leapt up within me. And I realized I hadn't used that terminology or that label, but it pinpointed the fact that, oh, those are also the stories that I keep being drawn towards, specifically in the Gospels, Mm -hmm. where they're having these, you know, just really beautiful encounters with Jesus. And so... I kind of just went on a little journey and said, okay, I'm going to intentionally, I think I was doing it already subconsciously, but I'm going to intentionally go and study the stories of the nameless women in the gospels and look at Jesus and his reaction with them. And what I found is as I was studying them was, I think they were such a reflection of men and women today. Mm -hmm. I, I almost think they weren't given a name on purpose. Yeah. So that we could almost like we could see ourselves in in their own lives and in their conversations with Jesus and in their own struggle. And so as I studied, I just began to realize, oh, this is a this is a picture and a truth that Jesus, he sees the people that are sometimes on the fringes, the people that feel unknown, people that feel their voice doesn't, you know, carry weight to the people who feel just like one of the crowd. Yeah. And he stops. He stops for the one in the crowd. You know, so that's my heart behind the book is two things. One, that people would know they're seen, but two, they just really fall in love more with Jesus, that they would get a new, fresh understanding of who he is and how good he is. Mm, I love that so much. And that is so much like his character. He's always drawn to the unseen, the unknown, the least of these. If you want to find Jesus, go to those places. So true. Yeah. Just to show up. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful for that because. Every one of us have been in those situations. And so I feel like as women, we can absolutely relate to this. Absolutely. Yeah. We can. You know, I think, I don't know of a single woman I've ever spoken to who doesn't have a story of some sort of rejection, some sort of really wrestling with the insecurity that comes with feeling unknown. I think sometimes just the ordinary tasks of our lives that get thrown at us, whether it's washing the dishes or doing carpool or doing the spreadsheets at work, like a lot of times we're doing things that are behind the scenes and you can sometimes just be like, does anyone see? (laughs) Does anyone know, you know, what I'm doing? Do they know what's on me? And he does. He really does. He does. And, you know, I think It's in those moments where we can partner with him, those hidden moments where he puts treasure within us. Mm -hmm. I was praying with the Lord. This was maybe last week. And he was speaking to me and he was saying, there's a great discovery taking place right now. 
And I saw this light begin to shine like on these caves of hidden treasure. And I feel like right now he's bringing people to light who've been hidden, where we've been behind the scenes. We've been doing the carpool lane, the drop-offs, the cooking, the cleaning, the weeping on our feet with Jesus, mm -hmm. interceding for nations, where people have not seen. But right now, there's a great discovery taking place among women. Mm -hmm. And so I was so excited to see that. And, you know, our Jesus, he is so kind. He gives generously to everyone, regardless of our gender or our station or our marital status or our bank account. It's really who comes to him and who is willing to receive from him. How much more can you take from him? Yeah. Because he's always willing to give. So true. Yeah, that's so good, Christina. I love that the Lord showed you that picture. I think I'm sensing that too right now in the body of Christ, that there are a lot of women specifically that have been in seasons of hiddenness. Yeah. And yet it's in those seasons of hiddenness that I just think, man, he is developing character, but he's also whispering the hidden things of heaven and, you know, in seasons, in moments of prayer and walking through hard things that no one knows about, but in that hard walk, discovering new facets of God's character and his faithfulness. Like when you forge that in the hidden place, then of course there's a season that he wants to kind of break that force because that people need what you've received in those hidden seasons. So yeah, so good. He's so good. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just, I, I love him so much. He's so kind. What's coming up on my heart I was reading this morning in this chapter that you shared about the widow and her two mites. Mm -hmm. And you shared about a story um, where you were over in Israel. Mm -hmm. And there was a widow that you got to help off the boat. Yes. Be because of her walk in the places that she has trusted Jesus, you discovered treasure in her. It did. And it, it caused you to stretch your faith and grow. Can you share that with our listeners? I will. Yeah. It's one of those defining moments of my life, you know, one of those stories. And it's so interesting, Christina. You know, I wrote this book like almost a year ago, and the Lord very clearly told me to tell the story. And now, like, it's coming out, and we're literally again in a season with war happening in, in Israel. And so it feels very um, strange. So in, in 2012, I uh, a mission team to Israel. And two days before we left, at that time, we weren't sure. It was kind of just called a skirmish with Lebanon, but it's now known as a war, broke out. And so we had to really pray and decide whether or not to go. And after a lot of prayer, really felt the peace of the Lord. We talked to our contacts on the ground and they just said, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. So my husband and I, we took 27 people from Texas to Israel and we arrived and I will never forget, literally like we first stepped we were staying at a kibbutz actually and it was right on the sea of galilee and my husband and i we walked out to the water and you could watch literally the water was like shaking with i think with the artillery going off like boom boom you could just see it shaking and i kind of looked at him like oh oh my okay like there yeah. are really things going and so as yeah. we're there they're preparing us and they said you know okay here's the thing we live under constant threat of war. And so we are so prepared. We have sirens that go off, but they will only go off if a rocket is incoming, okay? And because of that, if you hear the siren, you have 45 seconds to take cover. And we have bomb shelters everywhere. And I'll never forget a man on our team kind of raised his hand and said, I'm sorry, did you say 45 seconds, you know? Yeah, because yeah. And, and that's what we were all thinking, because, right, what, right. what can you do in 45 seconds? Right. And they said, they said, yes, right. because it's not going to go off unless it's literally been sighted, like it's incoming. And so we were probably on our third day of the trip and we were in the northern part, which was kind of where it was a little bit dangerous that moment. And yet everything had been OK. And we'd been going back and forth on whether or not we were going to go out and onto the Sea of Galilee. And I had been to Israel once before, and I knew what a powerful moment that was. And so I wanted it to happen. And our guide, who was part of, you know, 
former Israeli military, he was like, it'll be fine. It'll be great. So we go out into the Sea of Galilee and we are having this glorious moment. We turned on Shout to the Lord. I remember it so vividly. Like we were singing with Darlene, just <laughs> worshiping the Lord with all of our hearts. When all of a sudden out of the corner of like my ear, my, my periphery, I could hear this. You know, and it's the sound of a siren on the shore. And I'm trying to make eye contact with our contact and my husband. And I see the contact talking in his phone furiously. And he walks over and is talking to the boat driver. And he actually turned up the volume of the music. So most everyone on our team didn't even know what was happening. But they quickly, you know, turn the boat and we're headed towards shore. We're going as fast as we can possibly get to shore. And he begins to tell everyone, okay, hey, listen. You can hear the siren. There are incoming rockets. So here's what we're going to do. There is this brick wall. And he pointed it out. There was a brick wall in the distance. And he said, as soon as we dock, you are to run, run. And then I want you to duck and take cover around this wall. And he said, I've called our bus because our bus was no longer there at the shore. He said, the bus is coming in. So we've got to wait at the wall and then we'll get in the bus as soon as it's here. So, I mean, we are, you know, riding in this boat as fast as you can possibly imagine. And we have this moment where we realize, oh, wait, we have 27 people on our team that we're responsible for. And my husband comes to me and he says, okay, listen, like we have to get everyone off this boat. And at this time, you know, we're young and we are strong. And we looked around and there were actually three older women that had all gone with us on our trip. And so he said, I'm going to take this one. He tapped another strong man and said, I want you to help this one off the boat. And then he said, Paige, will you take Miss Wanda? And Miss Wanda was a giant of faith. She had been in our church, literally, I'd, I'd probably known her for 15 years already. She was in her 80s. She was a widow and she was a true intercessor. And I actually felt like I had the best assignment because of the three women, she was in the best health. And so we go and we park on land and everyone starts running. We have 20 somethings and, you know, Christina, they are leaping and jumping and running. And we have others that are walking really fast. And my husband, he actually ends up picking up the woman that he's assigned to and he's running with her. And I look around and I realize it's me and Miss Wanda left. And so I help her off the boat and we're walking and I'm trying to move as quickly as I can. And, you know... I mean, my heart is racing. I mean, this is, I live in, you know, comfortable America. I, yeah. I have no concept. I have no concept yeah. of war or of rockets and missiles. And I am scared. I'm just so scared. And so I'm like, okay, Miss Wanda, let's go. Let's go. And I literally said, I think I said, can we pick up the pace a little bit? <laughs> and as soon as I said that, Christina, she slowed down. <laughs> like she just slowed her pace and she looked at me oh. and she said these words. She said, darling, I have prayed almost all of my life to see the walls of Jerusalem. And my Jesus promised me that before I die, I would get to go see them. And she said, they're not on our itinerary for two more days. So I figure I've got 48 hours before he takes me out. <laughs> That's what she said. I was sure, and I think in the moment I was like, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so we made it. We made it to the rock wall. We got onto the bus. But as we left, you know, everyone's talking and just about, oh my goodness, we just survived this moment. And I remember sitting by myself in the bus, just shaken, A, because we had literally just gone through this traumatic situation, but mostly by the words of Miss Wanda. And I really thought to myself, she is so certain of the promises of God that he had given to her literally like decades before. Yeah. Like she was a woman who didn't have a lot of money. So this trip to Israel, like she had saved for it, you know, for decades. Like this was her heart's cry. Like this was her promise from the Lord. And he had promised her that she was going to see Jerusalem. And she was right. We were going there in two days. But the fact and the thought that that promise from him was so real to her that even with actual incoming rockets, her faith was not shaken. Mm -hmm. She was not bothered. In fact, she was going to slow down mm -hmm. to teach me a lesson. 
And it rocked my world. And from that day, I just started saying, Lord, I went faith like that. I started thinking about the promises the Lord has given me. I started thinking to myself, do I? Do I believe in those? Do I take them to the bank? Like they are hard cash, like Wanda does, you know? And and I just started thinking, there's something too about the fact that she's a widow. And and I talk in the book about the widow of two mites. That's what I pair the story with. And and what that says to me is, you know, Wanda had faced a lot of hard things in her life. She faced the loss of her husband. She yeah. faced financial situations. She'd faced sickness. And in those hard places, like we were talking about earlier, those hidden places, she had come to find that when he speaks, it's true. She could count on it. Like it was more solid than the ground she was walking on. And I don't know about you, but like, I want that kind of faith. I want to believe that when Jesus says something, it is done. It is true. Get ready to take your faith to the next level. As you sit at Jesus' feet, your faith will grow. As you hear his word, commune with him in prayer, and feast upon his faithfulness. In this beautiful journal, you can record your time with God. It includes 52 weekday entries, which can be used as a week or a day, depending on your preference. Record the scripture you're reading, your response to it in prayer, and a journal page plus an answered prayer section to record Jesus' faithfulness. Grab your colored pencils and Bible and be sure to get creative with the images. This journal will be a powerful memorial of your relationship with a living and loving Savior. Be sure to pick up a copy of At the Feet of Jesus Worship and Prayer Journal today. Links in the show notes or you can find a copy at Amazon or ChristinaPerera.org slash store. Absolutely. I love that story so much. And thank you so much for telling it. You told it beautifully. Okay. Well, I, I went for a little while, <laughs> but it's a good story. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good story. It reminds me years ago when I was believing for my first child, um, I had this baby box that I bought mm-hmm. from Things Remembered. Mm-hmm. And it was this keepsake box where you could put like the birth certificate, like their first curl. And like, you know, all of their stuff, right? Yeah. And years ago, the Lord gave me this promise, the word of God. It says, those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. And a child is a good thing. And so I took that promise and I took that word of God and I stuck it in that box. And I will never forget the Lord said to me one day one day I was crying and I was like Lord when am I gonna see this baby and I was not a happy camper I was pouring my heart out it was not pretty and he said as far as I'm concerned that box is filled Hmm. and I said when we get a promise from the Lord like that as far as he's concerned it's done I think sometimes We don't always understand what it's like to be a person of our word. But when the Lord says something, he's such a person of integrity and of his word. When he says it, it's done. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's no questioning. There's no hemming or hawing, or there's no, well, she didn't react this way, so I'm not going to give it to her now. You know? Yeah. When he says it, it's done. Yeah, that's so true. That's so good, Christina. You know, I think so often we put God in the same box as we put mankind. Yeah. And another theme I saw in, in Jesus interacting with these women, there were a lot of times where he would either, like there were a couple times specifically where literally women would come to him and they were begging for something or they were pouring their heart out. Yeah. And he would be silent mm. or he would kind of pause. He would make the moment I think probably a little bit even uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And and I was thinking about that too, because I think sometimes, you know, with the promises of God, we discount them because we've had people fail us with their promises. And also in this area of sometimes God is silent or he makes space or he's doing something. Mm -hmm. And in those seasons, we can just absolutely get in our head 
that he's left us or he's forgotten about us or his promise actually is not true. When in reality, he's just, what I found with these women was he was making space to do other layers of work in their heart or in the people around them. And so even in the seasons of when we're having to wait for a promise or we're having to, you know, be uncomfortable, the promise is still there. He's still good. And what's so great is he doesn't leave us. He stays with us in the waiting. He stays with us in the moments when we're uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting that you're saying that because lately the Lord has had me in this season of waiting for a promise. Mm. And he said this to me. He said, don't despise these days because these days are what's going to bring forth the promise in your life. Mm -hmm. So just like we need to be patient in those seasons, patient in those seasons of hiddenness, Because you're right. He is, a lot of times he's doing something within us and then Mm -hmm. he's also doing something around us, just like Esther. He's working behind the scenes and we can't see it. He's doing things that we can't even imagine. And so it's in those moments, just like that dear woman that you helped off the boat, Mm -hmm. where we fall back on the faithfulness of Jesus. Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. He's there. He's there. Mm -hmm. Is there anything burning on your heart you'd like to say directly to our listeners? Maybe those who are waiting, maybe those who are being stretched, who are even under the cover of rockets right now, because revealing Jesus is downloaded all over the world. Okay. Yeah. You know, I think what I want to say is I've already said it, but just that Jesus is, he is with you Mm -hmm. and he does not shy away from our pain. He does not shy away from our fear. He does not shy away when we don't have the right answers. He doesn't shy away when our world is literally crumbling. He just stays with us. And sometimes, sometimes I think we do question if he's abandoned us because his pace is not always as frenetic as ours. Yeah. You know, I was said this is a totally different thing, but Jesus, I've never seen in the Bible where Jesus runs. Mm. Like he always walks. And there were a lot of times that there was something urgent. There were a lot of times that, you know, people were coming to him with urgency. But he instead just kind of went at the pace that the Father directed him. And sometimes I think our feeling of aloneness or our feeling that he's left us, it's because we have outrun his pace. And we're going so fast. We're like, come on. But we're not called to ask Jesus to keep up with us. Mm -hmm. We are called to stay in step with him. And so in that season, when you do feel overwhelmed or alone, I would just encourage you to slow down. Get quiet. Get alone with the Lord. And just say, Jesus, would you remind me that you're here? And then listen. And he will show up and he will remind you. He hasn't left you. He's with you. That's so good. Thank you so Mm -hmm. much for sharing. That's so good. Yeah. Will you pray for our listeners today? I would love to. Yes. Father, I just thank you. I thank you for every person listening to this podcast right now. God, you see them. God, you know where they are. Some of them are in their car and some of them are at home. Some of them are at work. Maybe someone's even on a treadmill right now. God, I thank you that you see us. You see us in the hidden places and you see us even in our busyness. Father, I pray today that as these individuals listen, God, that you would just whisper into their hearts. God, that you see them and you love them and you know them by name. God, I pray right now that women who need to be reminded that you, you don't just love them, but you like them. God, I pray that they would have that revelation today, that God, you are madly in love with them and you created them and you think that they are marvelous. So Father, I thank you for that. Father, I pray too for those who are facing difficulty, those who are facing mountains, those who literally are underneath their rockets, their own rockets or literal rockets. And Father, I pray today 
that God, that they would take comfort in the reality, God, that they are not in that place alone, but God, that you are with them. Father, I pray that you would strengthen them. I pray that you would comfort them. And I pray that you would remind them today of the promises of the past and that your promises are yes and amen. Your promises are true. And we can rest in that fact that we will not be overcome because you have already overcome all that is trying to come against us. So Father, I thank you for that. I just pray blessing over everyone listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that. And thank you so much for being here with me today. It was a pleasure. I loved it. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Well, I hope and pray today's episode has blessed you as well. I will have links uh, in the show notes where you can connect with our guest, Paige Allen. And be sure to pick up a copy of her new book, He Knows Your Name. Until next week, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of Jesus. God bless. Beloved, let me introduce you to my King. He is altogether lovely. No matter which way you turn him, he is perfection personified. He is velvet and steel. He is meekness and majesty. He is glory and humility. He is kindness and strength. He is altogether lovely. And he is my king. And he can be yours as well. All day long, he holds his hand that you might take that you might turn one step, one grasp, one yes, one breath away from the arms of your loving Savior. Beloved, if you hear him calling your voice today, do not harden your heart. The Bible declares that not one of us is guaranteed another moment upon this earth. So pray this prayer with me today and run into the arms of the one who loves you, who knows you best. Father, I ask you to forgive me for all of my sin, for all of the places that I have fallen short, God, of your glorious standard. I ask you now to send your Son into my heart to be the forgiveness of my sin, to be my redemption, to be my righteousness, to be my holiness, to be my sanctification. I ask you to forgive me, to cleanse me, to fill me with your Spirit, your power, your glory, that I might bring glory to your name, Father. I thank you that I receive all of this by faith in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself up for me. I thank you that I am now a child of God, fully forgiven, fully righteous, fully holy in your eyes. And I ask you to help me walk out this life in a way that pleases and honors you, Father. I thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. I thank you for your love, for your kindness, for your great joy in saving me. And I thank you, Father, and I thank you, Holy Spirit. And I pray all of these things in your beautiful Son's name. Amen. If you've just prayed that prayer for the first time, I want to congratulate you. You are now a child of God, and all things are now yours. Keep listening to Revealing Jesus. Find a good Bible translation that makes sense to you. And keep hearing about our beautiful Savior Jesus. Please let us know. We want to continue to pray for you, and we want to send you a free PDF copy of our new Believer Workbook. Just go to christinaperrera.org slash welcome hyphen home. Enter your email address and we will be happy to send this free gift and continue to pray for your journey. God bless. I sincerely hope and pray today's episode has blessed you. Now it's your turn to continue the conversation. We are all evangelists of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Like this episode, rate it, share it with a friend. If it's impacted your life, let them know that you want it to do the same in theirs. Help spread the word of the good news of Jesus. Subscribe to the mailing list and get episodes, articles, downloads, and more sent right to you. Link in 
show notes or just text Jesus to 1-833-815-7778. Again, that's Jesus, 1-833-815-7778. We would love to connect with you on social media. You can find us at Christina Pereira Ministries on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Until next week, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of Jesus. God bless.